Now, in his long career, celebrity journalist Rob McGibbon has interviewed countless famous faces, but nothing's captured his imagination like the tragic and forgotten life of Olive Higgins from Margate here in Kent. Olive was 16 when she set off for finishing school in Paris in 1914, recording everything in her diary. Eight weeks later, she died. But now Rob is publishing an audio version of her diary on social media, the words read by another 16-year-old from Canterbury. Friday, 2nd of January. Wake up early. Rather funny feeling. Oh, Paris today. That accounts for it. Much rushing and hurrying by Dad and Pegs. Leave at last amid luggage and Aline's tears. Snow very thick between Margate and Dover. Rob McGigman joins us. Rob, thanks for being with us. Why did you want to bring Olive's story to life like this? Um, hello there, Pat. Uh, well, it's a fairly long story, but I was actually given the diary way back in 2001. And inside the diary were two newspaper cuttings. And in those cuttings, it revealed an astonishing sort of geographical connection to me and Olive surrounding um, Broccoli in South London. And it was really that sort of cosmic connection that has maintained my interest and quest to tell Olive's story. How did you come to be given the diary? Well, it was actually by, uh, from a friend of mine called Ian Burt, who was a builder and a, a sort of a hobbyist uh, bric-a-brac collector. And he was doing some building work on my flat in London. And he, he knew I was a journalist. And then one day he turned up with this diary and said, Hey, I've been wanting to give this to you for a while. You might find something to write about. And of course, when I saw the clippings inside, it completely inspired me. And how were you moved emotionally by reading the diary all these years after it was written? Well, I've read it countless times since I've had it. And it's a, it's a very sort of, it's a large format book. Olive writes beautifully. She really relays what's her inner thoughts and her, her homesickness when she's at school in Paris. What really moves me is that you know that she will die within eight weeks of the beginning of this diary. And to know that these are her last days is incredibly powerful and poignant and, and deeply touching. How did she die? Well, she died of influenza, uh, which is obviously a, a common illness these days. But back in 1914, it was a killer. She, she was poorly when she went to Paris and she fell ill there and they couldn't save her. That even a, a preeminent doctor from Britain went over with Olive's father to Paris and they made they managed to cure her for a while she rallied but then she died on the 25th of February. Have you managed to find out more about Olive since reading the diaries? Um, I've found out a huge amount about her life. Um, I've, I've researched it relentlessly. I've spent time in Paris on two occasions but uh, her father Thomas Higgins owned what was at the time a five-star hotel in Cliftonville. He was a very well-known local character. Um, Olive was yeah, the darling of his life. He, she opened the, the extension to the hotel in some grand ceremony later. I even had tracked down ancestors to the Higgins family. But unfortunately, they were reluctant to talk to me. So what prompted you to put this into an audio form? Uh, well, I've tried over the years different ways of telling this story. I, I've written books, I've even written film scripts, and I've never been able to get anything over the line and published or released. And then about a year ago, I was writing a podcast for this, which did, didn't take shape. And then I decided to get the, the diary narrated by a girl of, of Olive's age. And by complete fluke, my family and I, we went to the theatre a few months ago and we got talking to a couple of girls at the, at the theatre show with us. My son got to know them. And I asked one of them to do a reading of the diary. And when I heard her voice, I just knew that she was Olive Higgins for this project. Where can we go to hear the entire diary then? How available uh, is it, Rob? Um, well, Pat, in from the 1st of January, I'm going to be releasing each daily uh, entry in the diary as an audio on social media. So it'll be on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, so all those platforms. So the, the girl that's reading is called Anna Hagen. Mm -hmm. She's from Canterbury. She's done the most amazing job. So every day she will be um, narrating that day's entry from Olive Higgins. Wow. So, so we'll so, be able to follow in real time. 
in real time from January the 1st to the last entry, which is on February the 11th. And then after that, Oliver's ill for uh, 14 days. And I will relay what happens after that in Paris. So you'll be able to find it. If you Google uh, Olive's Diary 1914, that will take you to all the various links for the audio. Do you have further plans for the diary after this, once the audio is out there? I think it's going to make a feature film at some point, without a doubt. I've always felt that. But first, after this one, there will be a podcast. And that will... In the podcast, I'll be able to tell the backstory to my involvement with the story. And I think out of the podcast will come a book and then the film. I'm a forever optimist with this project, Pat. And what is it about Olive that's changed you in the way that it has? Well, I think it's changed me in the sense that it was so unusual how her diary came into my life at that particular time. And it was really that sense of fate that I was given her story and it's almost my duty to tell it. And it's just felt that connection because it came at such an extraordinary time with that extraordinary connection to Broccoli. It's just, I've just never, ever been able to let the story go.